Hi, welcome to Yoga for Joints. So I created this class because I've been having joint pain rise over the last four years and I have arthritis. And so I've been doing research on how best to handle my joints. And I read a research uh, from, from Johns Hopkins that showed that they um, offered arth um, yoga to arthritis patients two to three times a week. And after eight weeks, it showed improvement in their pain levels, their physical fitness, their physical mobility, and their moods. So it definitely can't hurt. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna throw in some strengthening around the joints, some stretching around the joints, and some modification to help with uh, joint restriction and joint pain. So take it at any level you wanna take it at. And I'm gonna use props. So I'm gonna have blocks and blankets and a strap any version of that that you have, blankets or whatever, you have towels at home, go ahead and grab that and I'll meet you on the mat. All right, we're gonna start with heroes. Heroes poses on our knees and having our knees compressed like this can be very uncomfortable for some people. I know I have days when, um, when it really hurts and of course sometimes it depends on the weather. Um, you know, for whatever reason, our joints are tied with the meteorology system, so, or they can be. So um, I'm gonna show you how to sit on your knees with a little more comfort, hopefully, but you can always uh, sit in a cross-legged position or sit with your legs out in front of you. All of those are options. So I'm gonna put a block underneath my sit bones. There's different heights that you can find here. So I'm gonna put a block under there. Now my, my heels are directly under my hip bones, so I don't have them out to the side because I'm not gonna be sitting back. We're just gonna be sitting tall. So they can be right underneath your hips that's gonna be more comfortable on your knees. It's gonna keep everything kind of in alignment. But I'm gonna go a step further and I'm gonna take this folded blanket and plop it on my calves and elevate even more. That is actually gonna pull all the weight off my knees so that my knees are almost up off the ground. It's an amazing feeling. Now, get, on to get into your spot on your knees or on your sit bones, sitting tall. Roll your shoulders back and together. Allow your eyes to close and your hands to rest on your thighs. And allow yourself to just focus on your breath and come into this moment. So I'll speak for me and say that sometimes when I would start experiencing joint pain in my movement and yoga, it was very frustrating, almost made me sad sometimes because I saw that range of motion diminishing. So I would check in with my, with my thoughts and my energy. And if I was labeling this as bad or saying, I don't wanna do this anymore, then I would start working on that. So if you find some discomfort that starts to upset you, make you mad, irritated, check in. Like, is there something that you can adjust perhaps? There's a big bee. <laughs> um, and go ahead and make that adjustment. Do it for your spirits and your energy. Find yourself in a comfortable place. What I love about yoga is it is for, it's for the long haul. So let's make sure we can stay in it for the long haul, that our emotional mental state is the right place to keep our body in it. Does that make sense? That's that mind-body control, that mind-body connection, not control. All right, we're just sitting, just noticing, adjusting as needed, right? So if you need extra blankets or towels, you can pause me and you can go put stuff underneath your ankles. If you're sitting up tall, it might feel good to elevate your sit bones. Um, if you're sitting with your legs crossed and that might hurt your hips, you can move your heels away from your groin or just extend them out all the way. Now let's deepen our breath a little. Deepen it with your eyes closed, deepen it. Breathe all the way down into your low, low belly. Imagine all that oxygen coming in and going off into your joints. Imagine the exhales releasing tension from your joints. Breathe like that for a few breaths. 
sending all the oxygen, oxygen bleh, to your joints for relief. And then on the exhale, releasing any tension from those places. If you're sitting cross-legged and you wanna release a little more tension in your knees, you can shove a, a block up under each knee or a blanket or a pillow. And my wish for you is to set an intention. Perhaps you do whatever you want with the intention, but, but if you don't know which way you wanna go, maybe it's just no judgment today. Maybe it's try the modifications and see how that feels. My goal at this point in my life is to create a yoga practice that I can continue to do for 20 years plus, maybe more, maybe 40. So that's my goal. I wanna keep doing this because it's good for my spirit and my mind and my body and my soul. So I'm not gonna let joint pain, it's not gonna stop me. Not today, man. All right, open your eyes. I'm gonna turn and face you for this. Still, uh, still on our knees. If you need to relieve any pain or change positions, you're welcome to. But we're gonna reach our hands out. We're gonna work on some wrist strengthening. So we're gonna open and close. Open your fingers real wide and then close them. And then open them wide and then close them. And then just start doing it faster. And if you get bored, you can go up and go down and go all around. Just open and close, open and close. We're working on those muscles all around our wrists and our forearms, strengthening those muscles. I have a, I have a lot of wrist problems and I love balancing on my hands. I loved it, but it's very hard right now. So in yoga, when we do things like plank, chaturanga, downward facing dog, there's weight on our hands and we're we're bearing a lot of weight so it is really good to kind of get our wrists ready we're still opening closing you should be really feeling it just me i move my arms around just so i don't get bored but you can stay like this if you want to a little bit more a little bit more open close open close open close open close <laughs> all right shake it off all right go ahead extend your right hand pull your fingers back towards you we're just going to stretch out our wrist and then down fingers towards your forearm. Switch sides, stretching it out. And then back towards you. And then roll them around. Roll them the other way. Get all the stretching out. We're going to move on to our hands and knees. So you can remove your props. If you're seated, go ahead and roll over onto your hands and knees. So if your wrists hurt in hands and knees, which I get, because mine do too. I'm gonna to give you your modification options. Modification number one, take this part of your mat and just kind of S-curve it back like this, right? So you're creating this little extra fold in there. And then you're gonna put the heel of your hand on the mat and the, your fingers on the ground. So your wrists are gonna be slightly elevated, your palms, sorry, uh, the heel of your palms are gonna be slightly elevated. So that's one thing to do. Now that's not enough for me but I'm also, instead of lining my wrist underneath my shoulder, I'm gonna move it forward a little bit because that takes a little bit of the crease out. So moving it forward and elevating it is a great option. I'm gonna use my blanket because I need a little more elevation and I'm gonna put the heel of my, my hand on that. Now my other hand is perfectly, my other wrist is perfectly fine in, in its flexion. So our, the other option is to use knuckles and take the fold out of your wrist completely or go on your forearms. So you can always do that. So I'm gonna use the blanket at the moment and I'm gonna roll around. We're gonna start rolling your shoulders around. You can go clockwise or counterclockwise. Just notice which way you're going because we're gonna go the other way. Roll around your wrists. And if one is just too painful to roll around, you can just make those knuckles and just get, get into the good wrist. So rolling around and just experiencing that for just a couple seconds. All right, now what you're gonna do, I'm gonna move my blanket for this so you can see, is you're gonna, we're gonna turn our, our fingertips towards our knees and go for pressing the palms in that way. Now this is kind of intense for me. So your whole palm does not need to go into the ground because we're just gonna get a good finger stretch too. So if you cannot get the base of that palm into the ground, I'm leaning way forward and I've got my <laughs> fingers so close to my knees for comfort. So I'm just gonna 
peel my hands up, stretch my whole hand that way, and then curl back down about three or four times. So we're continuing to breathe that, that deep breath, right? When, when you start to feel things, it feels intense, breathe into it and then check in with that energy like we talked about, that judgment. How are you feeling? Because it gets frustrating. And it's okay to feel frustrated if you're noticing it and you're coming back into this moment and telling yourself it's gonna be, it's gonna be okay. We got this. All right, let's put our hands back into hands and knees. And we're gonna roll through a couple cat and cows and just get into our spine. So inhale, sink the belly, lift the heart. And exhale, round the spine, drop the head. So your wrist can be out a little bit in front of you. Inhale. And exhale. You can even tent that hand if that feels better and just put your fingertips down. Inhale. Feel that space between your shoulder blades. We're gonna get into our shoulders in just a second. So pull those shoulder blades back and down the spine and then round them, broad in between them. Come back to neutral. All right, we're gonna move into a downward facing dog. So here's my suggestion. Because a downward facing dog is a little bit easier on our wrists because of the line from our wrist to our arm. Um, but we're also gonna be working our shoulders a lot. So I want you to Go back on your hands and knees if you're not still there. And I want you to pull your shoulder blades back and down the spine. They're coming and drawing away from your ears. We're gonna tuck and we're gonna lift our hips. Now wrap those triceps and slightly micro bend your elbows so that we're not locking out because we don't wanna get into our elbows. I also bend my knees a little bit in downward facing dog. So that if I were to bend my elbows, they would bend straight towards my toes, right? So instead of out, ooh, out because that'll hurt your wrist straight towards your toes down to facing dog you can pedal it out you can put your hand up on the blanket to relieve any wrist stuff or you can put your forearms down and do a dolphin and there will be no bend in your wrist so our shoulders are still drawing back and down they're staying in the sockets they're not pushing out right we're trying to keep that that level of comfort so we can keep the longevity. We're gonna inhale, extend your right leg. We're gonna move into hip work. And then we're gonna bend it, opening our hip, opening the front of our right hip. Now listen carefully to this. I'm gonna bend my knee out to the side parallel and then lift it back up. You're gonna feel it in the outside of your hip. So I'm keeping my knee bent for the first, for the first round. So my knee is bent. I'm gonna pull it out parallel with the ground. My thigh is parallel with the ground and then my knee goes back towards the ceiling. My foot is still flexed. Parallel with the ground, back to the ceiling. Last time, parallel with the ground. Knee back to the sky, extend the leg, plant the right leg down, lift the left leg up towards the sky. Open the left hip by bending the heel towards the glute. Knee points towards the sky. Thigh parallel with the ground. We're getting in the outside hip strength. Parallel with the ground to the sky, parallel with the ground, to the sky, extend the left leg, plant the left leg, plant the knees, hands and knees, sit back on your feet. Okay, so we're building strength in our shoulders by staying in downward facing dog. So we wanna make sure our shoulders are having that pulling back and down feeling and the outside hip flexor, right? We're building some strength. So we're gonna do it again. You have two options. One is to do what we just did. Or you can do what I'm gonna do, which is extending the leg, keeping it straight, moving into something I call fire hydrant, right? Like a dog peeing on a fire hydrant, like a dog pee. <laughs> and so I'm gonna show you first, and then we'll go into it. So your leg is gonna go up into downward facing dog uh, split, and then it's gonna go out to the side. So make sure that both hands are really pressing in here and your armpits are facing the ground, and then it goes back up. Alrighty, so 
lift your hips in a downward facing dog. Inhale, extend the right leg. Exhale, move it out to that fire hydrant. Inhale, extend. Exhale, move it out. You should feel that in your hip. Inhale, up. Exhale, out. Inhale, up. Plant the right leg. Moving to the left. Inhale, lift that high. Exhale to the side. Inhale, up. Exhale to the side. Inhale up one more time. Exhale to the side. Inhale up. Plant the left leg. Nicely done. Maybe bend those, bend those knees. Walk it out a little bit. I'm going to move my blanket out of the way. All right. We're going to move into a flow that's going to work on our shoulders and our hips. So inhale. If you haven't, if you're not in downward facing dog, meet me there. Right leg goes up. Step through. We're moving into warrior one facing our back leg. So let's just start for a second with our hands on our hips. I'm gonna face you for this. Warrior one. Okay, two hip things happening here. If your right leg is forward, that left hip flexor is opening. Now draw the right knee out so that we can get into the outside of the right hip. Now we're gonna raise, raise your arms parallel to the ground. Inhale, draw your elbows back. Exhale, palms go up. Inhale, reach for the sky. Exhale down. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. So what we're doing when we do this is our elbows are not going behind our shoulders and neither are our hands. They're staying in the front plane of our body. So we're inhale. Elbows stay in front of your elbows. Hands stay in front of the back plane. We're not going back here. We're protecting those shoulders and going up. This knee is staying out to the outside edge of the foot and strengthening that outer hip while your left hip is stretching, stretching, strengthening. All right, meet me with arms up above your head in warrior one. We're gonna open up to warrior two. I'm gonna face you, warrior two. So now your, your right leg is still moving to the outside, but now you're opening up a little bit more of that left side. Shoulders, let's go ahead and put our palms up. Let our shoulders kind of come down a little. I like it like this. It kind of gives a little relief on my shoulders when I feel a little that tweaky pinchiness and that rotator cuff, which we're gonna get into later. So we're gonna eagle our arms. So let's wrap, let's see. Let's wrap your right arm underneath. Let's hug first, hug yourself. Feel those shoulder blades broaden. Our, our right leg is getting really strong right now. Bring the backs of your palms together and maybe wrap them all the way around. Feel that stretch, lift your elbows. Belly in, lift your chin maybe. And exhale, palms away from your face. Get that really good stretch in those shoulders. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And then release your arms back to warrior two arms, but palms up. So you can feel that like that ease and peace. We've got strength and peace here. So go ahead and inhale, extend your leg. Ah, oh, starfish pose. We're moving into goddess, but we're gonna do something I like to call chicken arms. <laughs> so instead of goal post, right, we're here in goddess. So now both outside of both hips are strengthening. Our knees are we're rotating from our hips so that our knees are drawing towards the outside of our feet. Does that make sense? <laughs> pulling away from each other. They're pulling out and away. So our arms are gonna be here. Our hands are touching our shoulders. Draw your shoulder blades down and together. And on an exhale, we're gonna bring our elbows together. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, touch. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Move back into your warrior two. Swing that arm around into a lunge. Right leg is forward. And then we're just gonna slowly, carefully, slowly with strength, lower our back knee and untuck our toe. Bring your hands to the frame of your front foot and let those hips sink forward into a nice low lunge, stretching out those hips. And then we're gonna rock backwards into half split, half hanuman. Don't be intimidated by the word split. So we're just extending this front leg. 
and then we're going to move for back and forth through that inhale find that space in that hip exhale extend that front leg just move back and forth maybe about three times And then meet me at the front in a low lunge. So we're going into warrior three from here. <laughs> so we're gonna tuck the back toe under. We're really working on these muscles in this front leg and we're gonna go straight up warrior three. Big inhale. Now this is, this is just a passing pose. We're just moving through this pose. So we're gonna swing it all the way forward until our left leg is forward. All right, Woo, find that balance. All right, so just standing on the standing leg is gonna work the standing leg hip and elevating this left leg. So we're gonna do three heel touches. We're gonna tap our heel to the ground, no weight, and lift. One, two, three, bend that knee, rotate it out to the side. So you can't even see my knee, right? Because it's all the way to the side. And then you're gonna plant it on your leg wherever your tree pose leg goes. So this is outer hip rotation. This is strengthening that outer hip. Our knee is drawing back. So if I'm standing in a very skinny hallway, I don't want my knee to hit the walls, right? I'm, I've got a big plane, a wall right here and a wall right here. I don't want my knee to hit it. The walls are lava. Big inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, allow your shoulders to relax. Find that peace. I have my palms up so that my shoulders can sit down and in the, in the socket. Inhale, knee to the front. Exhale, plant your foot. Inhale, arms go up. Exhale, fold forward. Bend your knees, keep a slight bend. So I always keep a bend in my knees and my elbows, a slight bend to keep from locking it out because that really does irritate my joints. Just hang out for a sec. Hang out upside down here. <sighs> Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands, step back to a downward facing dog. You're welcome to vinyasa through a chaturanga, upward facing dog. Or you can just meet me in a downward facing dog. Inhale, your left leg goes up. We're going into warrior one. So put your hands on your hips again. We're gonna focus on the hips first. So that right hip is drawing forward while the right blade of that foot is go pushing into the ground, which lifts the arch of that back foot. The inner arch of that back foot is gonna come up. So you're gonna feel that all along the leg. And this front knee is drawing to the outside. So we have strengthening, stretching, happening in warrior one. All right, inhale, your arms are parallel to the ground, palms down. Exhale, draw your shoulder blades together. Elbows come back, but not behind your shoulders. Inhale, palms up. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, I reverse the inhale and exhale on this side. You're welcome to do it however you want. Just let your movement be connected to your breath. It doesn't matter to me how you do it. Palms down, elbows out, goal post reach up. Stay with these arms up for me. We're going to open up to warrior two. Warrior two, that left knee is still, that left thigh is still rotating and the neck, left knee is still drawing to the back edge of your foot. We're going to give ourselves a big hug with our left arm underneath, elbows on top of each other. And then you can bring the backs of your palms together or you can wrap it all the way around for your eagle arms. Inhale, elbows come up. Exhale, palms move away. So you're getting that big stretch, that drawing through the back. Keep that deep bend in that left leg. Keep that knee drawing out. Keep breathing. Breathing the extra oxygen into your joints. Exhaling, relaxing the tension from there. Inhale, undo your arms back to warrior two arms. Palms up, shoulders down. Inhale, starfish. Exhale, goddess with chicken arms. Chicken arms. Inhale, heart lifts. Exhale, retouches. One, two, 
here. Here we go. So I'm going to say something while we're here. I'm in a pretty deep bend. If this hurts your hips, you're obviously always, but that's the best part about yoga, allowed to draw out of that a little bit. You don't have to have that deep bend when you have a restriction like joint pain. You don't want to push that stuff. You want to keep the movement going, but you don't want to push through the pain. We're looking for longevity. We're looking to do yoga into our 90s. All right, inhale back to your lunge. Back to a lunge. We're going to lower down into our low lunge, slower, slower. Now, I have joint pain in my foot, so lowering down really slowly on this side, it's not happening. But you know what? It's yoga. That's okay. So I'm going to put my hands down, untuck my toe, and get into my low lunge this way, and then sink my hips. Everybody's different, and every body is different. So I'm going to do what's good for me. All right, something I just noticed I'm going to point out. My knee is not going to go past my ankle. So look out for this because we don't want to do that to our knee. So you can wiggle that front foot. As long as this is at a 90 degree and our knee is not reaching past, we're so good to go. We're going to move through our half split. And then sink into that low lunge. Shoulders back, heart forward. Exhale. Inhale. Down into the joint. Exhale, tension. Find peace and calm. It's in there. Okay. Oh, inhale, sorry. One more. Now from here we go into warrior three. I really don't care how you get there. Do it with comfort. It doesn't even have to be graceful. So you can tuck that toe under if that works for you. You can bring your foot up and then push up or you can stand up and just hinge. Warrior three. We're only here for a sec. We're just here to get that pendulum swing to the front. Inhale, lift the hips. Go ahead and put your hands on your hips. Lift the hips, lift the leg. Right leg is up. Tap your heel down three times. One, raise it gracefully. Two, we're not high, we're not high kicking. We're raising it and holding it. Three. Here the bumblebee is back. And bend your knee, move it out to the side. So rotating in that outer hip, and then finding your tree pose. You can do whatever you want with your arms. They can stay on your hips. They can goal pose. They can go up. They can go to your heart. They can go to prayer position. Just make your own unique choice about what feels good for you today. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, lower your shoulders. Drop your worries. Inhale, heart lift. Exhale, worries be gone. All right, inhale, knee to the chest. Lower your foot. Inhale, arms go up. Exhale, forward fold. Ha, ha, ha. Hanging out. Bent knee. Ha. Let that, let that back just relax and stretch. Now, hamstring stretches um, can be really intense. Uh, I've talked about hamstring flexibility. Either you have it or you don't. I do not. It is something I work on. Blocks are a good friend. Or pillows. Or chairs, if you have a chair. Whatever you want to use here is so totally, totally fine. So since this is yoga for joints, uh, what I'm really aiming for, not just stretching and strengthening your joints, but finding comfort in some of these poses. So find comfort. Experiment. Pause me. Go get more blankets or pillows, whatever you need to do. All right, half lift. Step back to your downward facing dog. Let's go ahead and lower your knees. So we're, actually, let's sit back. We're going to move into pigeon. Definitely get blankets if you have hip or knee issues. I use a blanket almost 100% of the time for the past eight years of doing yoga in, in this pose. So this, it's just, it's not gonna change. And I'm okay with that. Actually, I'm great with that because it, it allows me to access a pose that is tricky. And unless I'm extremely warmed up or it's a very hot day and there's not a rain cloud in sight, my joints are gonna, they're gonna talk very loudly to me. So I'm gonna get a blanket and I'm gonna, once I move into pigeon, I'll figure out how much uh, fold I need, but I'm gonna start with like this. So 
I'm gonna have it here. I'm gonna go up to downward facing dog. Right leg's gonna come forward first. So I have a two foot in this pose. My knee and my hip like to chat. So what this means to me, and I'm gonna face you a bit, is that I can't have my knee too bent in this pose because this hurts. So I need to bring my shin parallel with the front of the mat, which is more on my hip. So I have to have that elevation so that I'm not falling over like this, okay? So there's a combination of things happening. So I might want another blanket or a block underneath my knee. So if you have books, pillows, start working. What, what, what I want you to do is allow your hip to open and stretch in this position and your back leg, I'm gonna rotate even more. I'm just gonna keep turning. I need like a camera above me. Your top of your foot and your knee on the ground so that left hip can draw forward. So we are here, yes. So our hip points, they're moving forward. They might not be perfectly square, but our body is not perfectly square, so that's okay. And then we're gonna find comfort and peace. This is intense, so it's gonna take that breathing, that focus on that breath. And then if you would like to start to fold over, you can put blocks in front of you. You can put your forearms on blocks or pillows or bolsters or whatever you have and start to relax forward into this pigeon pose. Inhaling deep down into your joints, exhaling, releasing tension. Inhaling oxygen into your joints, exhaling tension. Just visualize that while you're breathing. Let your focus go into your breath, non-judgmentally, sitting in this pose. Yeah, that's the key, non-judgmentally. It's okay. Come out if you have to come out. Take a break, add more blankets, whatever. Don't, don't get frustrated or when you do, notice it and then think, how can I fix this? How can I find comfort or ease or peace in this pose? Focus on the breath. So your right hip is open. Left hip is facing the ground. Left top of your foot is facing the ground. Inhale if you lay for if you lay forward. If you walk your hands forward, walk them back up, lift your heart, lift your chest, plant your hands on the ground, tuck your toe under. Ooh, we're gonna lift back up in the downward facing dog and let's pedal out. Pedal, pedal, pedal. Big inhale, exhale, side out, out through your mouth. Let that shit go. Big inhale. One more. All right, set your blanket up for the other side, for left side pigeon. Move it, you're gonna need potentially different setup for this side. So just notice your side to side difference without judgment and be like, yeah, this side's tighter, this side's more flexible. This side of my knee is fine. The other side of my knee was like not having it. So just notice it, get curious, get to know what's going on in your body. Find your, find your comfort, find your setup, find your alignment. And then start to allow yourself to focus on the breath. Start to find that peace, that ease. Let your breath feed you. Notice your thoughts. And just come back to the breath in full acceptance. Fully accept yourself for exactly where you are. Embrace it, actually. Nothing's gonna feel better than that. Just being like, yep, totally. You can take, I'm gonna do a full setup here. Blocks and a blanket. Dharma, no. Each exhale allows you the opportunity to release that tension to maybe sink in further.
On an inhale, walk your hands back up. Remove your props. Tuck the back toe under. I'm gonna meet you in downward facing dog. All right, so we're moving into a yogi squat. So you may want a block for this. I'm gonna use a block or two or blankets. So this is a big hip opener that we're moving into. And sometimes we might want some support. So go ahead and look at your hands. Now your feet are gonna walk to the outside of where your hands are. Yep. So one foot is gonna come to the outside. I don't care how many steps you take to get there. The other foot's gonna come to the other outside and you're gonna drop your hips. I'm gonna drop mine right onto this block. Your elbows on the inside of your knees. Knees are drawing out. You can press your palms into each other and your elbows into your knees. Back spine is long and heart is lifting forward. Like so. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, shoulders melt. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, tension melts. Check in with your jaw and your neck. Maybe smile. See if that, see what that does to you. Just experiment with a smile. Perhaps a thought of gratitude. Today, I am grateful for finish the sentence. One more breath here. Remove your block or a blanket or pillow or all of the above. Sit all the way down. Extend your legs out in front of you. Oh, all right. This is a cool little, cool little stretch. We're going to start with our knees bent and you can use that to roll your spine down to the ground. All right, so knees are gonna be bent. Actually, let's go ahead and do our bridge pose first. So palms at the side, hands are pressing in. So this is more of our hip strengthening. You're gonna press into the ground. Go ahead and kind of inch your shoulder blades together. Inhale, lift your hips to bridge pose. Maybe when you're up there, you can bring those shoulders, draw those shoulders in a little bit closer. Feel that stretch along the back of your neck, front of your hips. Big inhale, heart lifts. Exhale, rolling down the hips. Let's do it again. Inhale, lift your hips into your bridge. Shoulder blades come together, palms are down. Take a couple breaths here. And on your next exhale, lower your hips down. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring one palm on top of the other palm, but in your low back. So lift your hips up. Plant your palms just above your tailbone or in your low back area. We're gonna play with this a little bit. Now, you're gonna feel this in your rotator cuff. It's a bit of a rotator cuff stretch, so I'm gonna give you options. It can be lower in your tailbone or it can be higher depending on what your range of motion is. So what we're gonna do, and your knees can stay bent or you can extend. What we're gonna do is find and play with that for a couple seconds. Maybe you pull your hands apart a little bit or they stay one on top of the other. Find that after you've played with it for a little bit, find some stillness. And I want you to go back to that breath, that inhaling all the way into your joints. This time we're thinking about our rotator cuffs and our shoulders and exhaling, releasing tension. Breathe into that for a few more breaths. Inhale, bend your knees, plant your feet, lift your hips, take your arms out, oh, so carefully. Maybe rotate them back and forth. Hug your knees, rocking back and forth. Oh, oh, oh. 
and then maybe hug yourself and give your shoulders that way. Sweet stretch. All right, extend your legs out, roll over onto the belly. So we're gonna roll onto our belly. Let's go ahead and let's give our quads a stretch. So think about your knees here. We're gonna see what's comfortable. So we, compressing, sometimes we've learned, is a little intense. So we're gonna stretch our quads, but if you don't wanna bring your heel towards your glute, you can lift your knee up. <laughs> Wait, what? So you can take one arm, cross it in front of you, parallel. your forearm is parallel in front of the mat, and lift, lift that knee up off the ground. Press into your hand. You can extend it out in front of you, but keep that shoulder engaged. So some people, this might hurt your knee, this compression, pulling your heel to your glute. So I'm just gonna have you lift it. Shoulders back and down. So we wanna protect those shoulders while we're doing this still. And then lower, that's an intense one. Switch sides. So now our left hand is in front. It can be extended out in front or parallel with the front of the mat. Shoulder blade, back and down. Shoulder in the socket and our knee lifts. Heart lifts, shoulders drawing away from our ears. We don't need to compress the back of our neck either, so we don't really need to look up. We can keep our gaze right off the edge of our mat here. All right, let's do both at the same time, shall we? So reach back, guess what? This is when a strap comes in handy. If there's any part of this that is uncomfortable on your shoulders or your knees, we can still get the stretch, yes. So belts work here towels work here <laughs> it's all good all right inhale lift the knees Ooh, hoo, hoo. exhale lower inhale lift And lower. One more time. Lift. And lower. And so you can also always put a towel right in that back crease of your knee. And that can relieve some of the pressure on your joint for when you do want to stretch it out this way. So if you want to go into a full bow pose here and that feels good for you, you can grab your feet, lift your heart, lift your knees, lift your chin up until it's parallel with the ground. Lower, go ahead and put your hand on top of the other hand and put your forehead on there. And just breathe and rest for a second. All right, take your hands out from under your forehead, put your forehead on the ground, arms come out to a T right at the side. So your hands are parallel with your shoulders, reaching out to the side. Go ahead and bend your right arm put your right hand underneath your shoulder so it's gonna go like this on the other side and then you're gonna press into that arm I'm gonna reverse it for you you're gonna press into that arm and roll onto your side so you're rolling onto your left side pushing with your right hand that makes sense so this is a shoulder stretch we're getting into our shoulder so you have some options here you can stay right here if this is plenty, right on your side, legs on top of the other. Or you can take this top leg, bend it, and plant that foot on the ground. If this is plenty, you can stay here. Or you can take the other foot, bend it, and plant both feet on the ground. That's too much for me, so I'm just going to have one foot on the ground. You can just let your head rest. You can put a pillow or a blanket underneath your head if that feels good. You're getting a pretty good stretch in that left shoulder right now. Your palm is down on the extended arm facing the ground. Just breathe. Back into that deep breath. Into the joint. Exhaling tension. So at any point you can pull out of this rotation and just give yourself a little bit less. You can put a blanket underneath your shoulder that's touching the ground if you want and try that and experiment and see how that works. Gently and carefully, slowly cut, roll out of that, back onto your belly, and we're gonna switch sides. So now you're gonna extend your, your what'd we do? Now you're gonna extend your left arm, your right arm. Yeah, 
now you're extending your right arm. Sorry, I reversed it. And then you're gonna push with your left arm and rotate into that arm. So rotate onto your side first. See how that feels, check in with that. That left arm extended. Then if you want, take that top leg, bend it, bend that right knee and plant it on the outside. You can see what it feels like to go all the way in with both knees bent, experiment. If that's good for you, stay there. If it's too much, come out a little. Breathing into the joint, continuing that deep breath, connecting the breath with the movement. Getting that big shoulder stretch. And then when you're ready, very carefully, slowly roll out of that onto your belly. Bend your knees so your, your um, soles of your feet face the sky and then just rock your feet back and forth. I think it feels really good on the hips. You can crisscross them if you want. And then you can roll back over onto your back. We're gonna go into Supta Baddha Konasana, so reclined bound angle pose. So that is a big hip opener. So we have props, yes. So we can use blocks, we can use blankets. I'm gonna put one blanket on either side. And guess what? You have the option to not do this. You can just go straight into your Shavasana. So I threw in hip strengthening, hip flexibility, uh, hip modifications, shoulder strengthening, shoulder flexibility, uh, wrist strengthening, flexibility, and modifications, and knee, knee protection and modifications. So there's a lot of stuff in here, and I, I threw it into a lot of poses. So our bottoms of our feet are together, our knees are out, we're gonna recline and lie down and just let gravity do the opening right? We're letting gravity do some stretching on our hips here. If after a few breaths you feel like you could remove a prop, remove it. If after a few breaths you feel like you need a prop, add it. Have grace with yourself. Allow yourself to create a practice that is sustainable for your longevity. When you can practice multiple times a week, you actually apparently, according to Johns Hopkins, have the possibility of increasing your mobility and your mood and reducing your pain. So I guess my words to you are, have grace, don't push it. So you can come back tomorrow or the day after tomorrow and not look at that mat and think, ugh, I can't do it anymore. Or, oh, there's pain involved when I get on that mat. I want you to look at the mat and think peace. I want you to look at this mat and think healing, comfort, love, self-care, all those things. Stay in your Supta Baddha Konasana as long as you want. When you are ready, you can take your props out and extend your legs into your Shavasana. You can let go of any control of your breathing and just let it be. As you lie here, I ask you to reflect on some gratitude for your body. What your body can do, not what your body can't do. It's much easier and stickier to get tied into those things that are negative, the things we can't do, they really hook us much greater than the things we can do. What if we reverse that? What if we reverse it by practicing more appreciation and gratitude for our strengths than worrying so much about our weaknesses or what we can't do? What if?
my goal of every class I teach is to be able to give you something that makes you feel a little better about yourself and, and about the moment at hand exactly as it is and how to take something away even from a time of difficulty or struggle or if you're experiencing pain like I am and arthritis, I want to share that. I want to share with you. I want you to know that you are not alone. I want you to be able to take an experience that you have on the mat in the class and apply it to your life to allow it to fuel you in a great and positive way that you can go forward and and feel inspired to do something great or something simple and not great just to feel that joy and love and freedom and peace right I'm a total hippie I just want to spread the love and the peace that's no mystery everybody knows me knows that I'm like that and I love it so I'm here for you I'm here to offer you as always I want to offer you what you need if after this class you you want something else that I don't have let me know and I will create it this is this is soul food for me right this feeds my soul and I hope that this movement and this practice feeds your soul. Big inhale, stretch your whole body, fingers and toes stretching away from each other, bringing your knees to your chest, giving yourself a big hug. Rolling onto your side, either side, whatever's comfortable for you, because I know for me lying on my side and my hip and my shoulder is actually painful, so you can lie on your back if that's easier on your joints or if your left side is easier than your right, roll onto your left side. And when you're ready, keeping your eyes closed, come up to a seated position, place your hands right over your heart, feel your heartbeat. Repeat that gratitude that you came up with earlier about your body. If you didn't come up with one, now is a good time. Take a deep breath. You can be grateful for that. So life is going to be full of ups and downs and pain. And we might walk around with a little chronic pain in our and our joints and things like that, but we are not gonna let it get us down. We're gonna keep moving. We're gonna keep focusing on the things we can do, not the things we can't do. We're gonna let that positivity infect us with, with so much joy and love that we treat ourselves really well and hopefully through that treating ourselves well, we start to feel better and we start to heal from the inside out. Big inhale. Reach your arms up for the sky. Shoulders down. Exhale, bring your hands back to your heart. You can have palms together however you want it. Thank you so much for taking this class, for treating yourself well, and for being non judgmental and noticing the things that you can do and the gratitude for yourself and the things that, that, you, that you are. Have a wonderful day. Go about your day. Take a little love and joy with you. See you later. Peace out.